Welcome back. In this session, we are going to look at the capabilities of Data Factory Monitor. We'll look at the status of triggers and pipelines within our Data Factory. We'll look at rerunning a failed pipeline and we'll look at the metrics available and how to add them to our dashboards and also we'll create alerts from failures in our pipelines. So let's switch over to the Data Factory and get started. Okay, here we are in our Data Factory. Let's switch to our Monitor tab, and you got these options on the left in your Monitor. So the first one is Dashboard, that's what you're seeing here. These are pre-configured dashboards for you. So you've got the pipelines, triggers, and activity runs here. So the default is 24 hours. So you've got the last 24 hours worth of pipelines, triggers, and activities are listed here. I've got 8 pipelines succeeded and 1 pipeline failed. All such kind of details you can easily find with the help of this dashboard. So the filters you've got are, you've got the time which is the reporting time for this dashboard and it's currently reporting the last 24 hours. But if you wanted to pick the last 7 days or 30 days, you can pick them. So this is the last 7 days. And if you want to go over a custom period, then you would go for a custom period by specifying the time here. And you've got time zone support here and quite a few time zones. So you pick your time zone where you've got your triggers or pipelines running as well. So that is the dashboard, it's very simple, you can't really tweak anything. So, you can't add to this dashboard but I'll show you how to create your own dashboards later. And these two, you've seen them before but I'll quickly go through those ones. So you've got the pipeline runs and the trigger runs. Let's start with the pipeline runs. So it's currently showing the last 24 hours because we set the filter on the dashboards, but we can turn it into last 7 days. So the filter is exactly the same as the other, other one we've seen. So if you want to do a custom date, you would do the custom date range and then you can specify the time zone as well. So let me go back to 24 hours. So we are seeing fewer triggers as we saw in the dashboard. We got these five triggers running every day for me at the moment. And you can do filters on your trigger name, so you can filter on the trigger name if you have many that'll be really handy and you can look at the status as well. So if you want to look at all the failed ones in the morning, so you would come in and then just filter on the failed and you can fix them. So, the other thing you've got is the latest runs and the all runs. So if you had a failure and then if you rerun that one normally it shows you the latest run by default, but if you want to see the previous runs then you click on the all runs and then you can do that. I think I did one of those in the last few days, so let's see whether we can find that. So, you've got the one here and then you've got another one, so this one is still waiting for dependency. That's because I put that in incorrectly, so it hasn't satisfied the dependency window. So. But if you run a failed one, or if you're rerunning a trigger, you will see them here as well. So that is that. And in the pipeline runs, you'll see all the pipelines that run. So I'm going to again filter it to just the 24 hours. So we got fewer records. So we got the five pipelines triggers. Five triggers are here. So here you will see the start and end, and then the duration, and then whatever trigger it's triggered. So you'll see any parameters, we don't have any parameters on those ones. And if you put any annotations, you can see them as well. If there are errors, you'll see them and you can add further filters as well. So you've got the filters on pipeline names, status and runs, and you can add annotations. Filter on the annotation for example. So that is what you do there. And again, the filter here is the custom time range and the 24 hours and 7 days and 30 days. So that is the pipeline runs window. So next we've got the integration runtimes, so we can report on the status of the integration runtimes from here. At the moment, we only have the default order to resolve integration runtime. But if you had any self-hosted or Azure SSIS integration runtimes, you would see all of them listed here with their statuses. And if you had a data flow in debug mode, then you would have those data flows listed here, so you can come and monitor those here as well. And the other thing, this is quite important, so you can create notifications from the data factory monitor. So if for example, you want to report on any failures, or successes of triggers, or activities, or pipelines, you could come in here and create a new alert. 
So you set your target criteria and tell us you what to do whether to send an email or send an SMS or a voice notification, for example. And we'll do this in one of the forthcoming sessions. And also you can report on the metrics, but if you click on that one, that opens up as you monitor and you can create metrics from here. So you'll select your Azure Data Factory and then you can report from there. So I'll show you this in one of the forthcoming sessions as well. So that's the end of this session. In the next one, we will try and create a failure and then we'll monitor that within our dashboards and I'll show you how to rerun from a failure as well. See you then.